So whether, whether you're a physician or a nurse, you spend a tremendous amount of time studying the latest medical literature to incorporate the lessons learned into your daily practice. And in our journey to extinguish burnout and create the life we want, the medical literature can offer us clues on applying ways to heal us. I came across this beautiful article highlighting the Rosetto effect and I knew the lessons described in the article were far greater than the pages it was written on. So what is it? What is the Rosetto effect? Well, it all started in a small town of Italian Americans in Eastern Pennsylvania called Rosetto. And the town doctor was entirely mystified but what appeared to be the Rosetta's, quote, immunity to heart disease. So a study was funded by the state and federal agencies, and in 1964, this study was published in the Journal of the American Medical Association. So during the seven-year study period from 1955 to 61, there were several main observations that were made. Number one, there was a complete absence of heart disease in men under the age of 55. Two, there was no one under the age of 55 who had died of a heart attack, and three, death rates from all cases were 35% lower compared to the neighboring community. So what makes the Rosetta effect so powerful? Well, many of us in medicine have heard of the Framingham study, which began in the late 1940s, and it continues even to this day. And in the Framingham study, the researchers learned that smoking, high cholesterol, diabetes, high blood pressure, and family history all played a significant role in early heart disease. So it seemed logical that the researchers of the Rosetta effect would start there. Well, the Rosetta, pe the Rosetta people must have a healthy diet, right? Well, with all the writing about the importance of a healthy diet, this must have been the reason for the Rosetta effect, right? Well, it turns out that that was not at all the case. The surveyors of the study met with the people of Rosetto. They obtained blood work, which included things like serum lipoprotein electrophoresis, blood glucose concentrations, hematocrit, and they even had a dietitian survey the entire population. They even shared meals with the Italian Americans of, Ros of Rosetto. And what they found was astounding. According to the study, they, quote, eat substantially more calories and substantially more fat than the average American. The two local Italian physicians who knew most of the families, quote, pointed out that the favorite dish, prosciutto, has a rim of fat more than an inch thick and that Rosettans eat it whole without discarding the fat. It was also pointed out that cooking is done by most families with lard rather than olive oil as the principal shortening. Another favorite dish described is fried peppers, which is cooked in lard and they, quote, most dip their bread in the lard gravy to consume the whole dish, end quote. But their serum cholesterol levels closely match those reported in the Framingham study. So if it's not diet, then it must be their lifestyle, right? It turns out that this is likely wrong too. The people of Rosetta are very hardworking people. And during the beginning of the study, most of the Rosettans worked in the neighboring slate quarries. And toward the end, most of the men worked in steel mills and electrical industries. And the women worked in factories that made shirts and blouses. So additionally, Rosetta's people were described as quote, vigorous and fun-loving people eat a great deal and drink considerable alcohol, mostly in the form of wine, end quote. Well, well, what is it then? What caused the Rosetto effect? Well, in one word, friends, it's community. The most striking feature was the way the people of Rosetto seemed to enjoy life. In the article, it says that they were, quote, they were gay, boisterous, and unpretentious. The unpretentious, and they were unpretentious and they behaved in a way similar to their neighbors, the visitors impressed on the community was one class, peasant-style society made up of a simple, warm, and a very hospitable people. They were found to be mutually trusting. There was no crime on Rosetto, and they were mutually supporting. There is poverty, poverty but no real, no real want since the neighbors provided for each other. They helped the needy, most especially the immigrants that were still arriving from Italy. So the lessons learned from the Rosetto people, friends, is what is the lesson? Well, the incredible lessons that can provide all of us is we are always rushing to find the holy grail to fix this problem or that. As, and as we become more silent in medicine, we notice that burnout is growing exponentially, right? And there's a lesson in the Rosetto effect. When was the last time you went to a doctor's lounge and found it filled with physicians sharing stories or laughing over a meal? Now, commonly, there are pre-made meals or snacks that can be picked up and you're back out the door to go see your next patient. Friends, don't underestimate the power of community. 
Our well-being rests on the connections we have with others. And when we feel we belong, we experience a richness in life, physical health, and mental health. Having a sense of belonging protects us against other physician, against physician burnout. And this is distinct from loneliness. One can have many social connections, but feel lonely still, when one can have few social relationships and feel fulfilled in a sense of belonging. A great way to create a sense of belonging is to do acts of service and kindness for others. Volunteering is a natural extension of this, and spending just one to two hours per week will reap an incredible return on your mental and emotional health. So start locally first. Find something that you are interested in, and undoubtedly there will be an opportunity to volunteer. If you need some more guidance, there are many websites that can help you find these areas of volunteer opportunities. I've, lifted se- I've listed several. There's volunteer- volunteermatch.org, idealist.org, allforgood.org, and catchafire.org, and they'll be in the show notes as well. So friends, get started today. As humans, we are wired to connect with other people. Fostering healthy social connections in medicine is a critical piece of our wellness. Physician burnout stems from many dimensions, but what is a common thread is that, is that of social isolation. As medicine continues to become more specialized, the more social isolation a physician or a nurse encounters, it is no surprise that there is an increase in depressive symptoms and suicidality. suicidality. The importance of social connections in medicine cannot be understated. Friends, social support and connecting with others, especially in medicine, needs to be a priority for our overall health and wellness. Creating a community be, can be the antidote toward the crippling adversity we sometimes feel uh, as we go through our, our, our day-to-day responsibilities. I'm here to help you, friends. My mission is to give you the courage and the tools needed to help you learn, grow, and prosper in the important areas of your life, personally and professionally. So if you're looking to get started and begin your journey toward wellness, click on this link I provided for you, and I have three video series to walk you through the first steps of this wonderful adventure. Join hundreds of other doctors and nurses who have had the courage and permitted themselves to deserve a better life. Let's walk this journey together, friends. Click the button here in the show notes and get started today. And yes, you can succeed at home and at work. It takes intent and a mentor to walk with you. If you provide the first, I'll give you the second. So let's get started today. So friends, I am am reminded of of a wonderful, wonderful story uh, that highlights the importance of community. As many of you know, I'm the wellness uh, chairman of, of, of my, my local hospital. And one of the things that's always going on in the back of my mind is how can I uh, find, it, find better ways for the, the physicians and the nurses, how, they can, how we can um, join together and find better ways to help each other. And one thing we used to typically do is we used to have a monthly dinner. And um, this was prior to COVID. And one thing that I wanted to send out, I sent out a survey saying, hey, listen, guys, I don't want to take away time away from your families. Would you prefer doing our meetings uh, via Zoom or via Skype? And almost all of them still wanted to meet in person to have our dinner meetings. And that was just so eye-opening for me. The community that we have when we have a meal together, it can never be replaced. It can never... Video is good, but it can never be replaced by the interaction that we have from each other. And the Rosetta effect just highlights just what we instinctively know is community is so important. And as more and more, more and more of us in medicine kind of go in our silos and don't talk with each other, it really contributes to our burnout. So friends, take the lessons from the Rosetta, the Rosetta people, and take the lessons that they've given us, and, and that is community is so vitally important, especially during this current crisis that we're under. It's so important to be part of a community. I've created this community for us, at least virtually, for the thousands of us and the millions of us who are interested in this type of work that I'm doing, and that is the the Private Medicine Revive Facebook group. Again, there'll be a link in the show notes where you can click on that link and you can uh, get yourself involved in the Medicine Revive Facebook group. And speaking of crisis, I'm going to be launching a mini course over the next week or so on specific resources and specific tactics to help 
You, the physician and nurse, conquer your fear and anxiety amid a crisis. I've created this mini course that's specifically geared for you. So please stay out on the lookout for an email that's going to be coming to your inbox that I'll be uh, launching that mini course for all of us. So friends, until next time, be good to yourself and each other. We'll talk again soon.